Hmm. So my question is, yeah, can we afford to take off the steam a bit against Spurs tomorrow night? In that first leg game, we definitely had the surprise factor on our sides. Tuchel introduced an asymmetrical 4-4-2 system which completely took Spurs by surprise. And we also were helped by the fact that Tottenham, in typical fashion, kind of beat themselves as well. Now, I guess you could say they scored two own goals against us. Of course, Sanchez hitting into the net. And of course, Tanganga and Davis with a comical blunder to make it 2-0 from a set piece as well. Irrespective of that, Spurs couldn't handle our press. Spurs couldn't stop us playing out from the back. They weren't getting close enough to shut the spaces down either. And to be honest with you, we could have won that game 3 or even 4-0. So I guess my question is, how much confidence really are Spurs taking into the second leg tomorrow night? After that first leg game, post-match, Conte basically admitted that we are one of the best teams in Europe currently. Of course, we're the European champions as well too. And the reality is, it's just that, you know, they are better than us. We are better than Spurs. There's a goal from class at this point in time. So I'm thinking in terms of inspiration and confidence, how much is there really going to be from Spurs tomorrow? Now, recently, against Morecambe in the FA Cup, they went on to win that game 3-1. However, it took three late goals from the 74th minute to get that comeback. Morecambe were very close to a surprise FA Cup shock. And it took all the heavy hitters, like your Lucases, your Harry Canes, for Spurs to actually get the win. If the plan was to rest some of these guys for the second leg, well, then it's not very ideal right now. And when you realise that there won't be any Romero, no Dyer, no Bervine, and of course, no Son as well too. For me, I think there is a big opportunity here for Tuchel to continue to use some smart rotational choices in the team. In that first leg, Saul was not supposed to play that game. He was a last minute decision due to the fact that Kante and Silva picked up COVID. And I think it's safe to see that Saul definitely took the opportunity with both hands, putting in one of his best performances throughout the entire 12 months in my opinion. Very good performance. I went mean, seeing his performances, SARS as well too. I think tomorrow our squad can definitely handle the occasion and get us into our first of hopefully many more finals to come in 2022. In today's match preview, guys, I'm going to break down Thomas Tuchel's press conference. I'm going to go through my predicted lineups and at the end, I'm going to give you guys my match prediction too. So I hope you guys enjoy. Smash that like button. I have released a big new Zelly video too. So stay tuned for that as well, you guys. And without wasting no more time, we start with the press conference and surprisingly, or I guess unsurprisingly, there weren't too many questions asked about our second leg game or even the big game against Man City later this week, which is, I guess, kind of typical. So let's break down some of the key points discussed today and we discuss the January window. Of course, Tuchel was asked to give us some updates behind what's currently happening with the club's efforts currently. And Tuchel said that, you know, they're reacting to the news daily, um, but there's no updates at this point in time. It's clear what areas that we need to be looking at. Um, but at the same time, there's no need for pressure. Me and the team are very relaxed and I'm very happy with my entire squads. He was then asked to give his thoughts on the January market in general. I guess the journal is trying to find some like easy headlines out of this interview with Tuchel basically saying that he doesn't really know. But I guess you could say Aston Villa are pretty busy. And I guess you could say that most teams are probably happy with the squads they have right now. So we move on and we discuss the latest news surrounding Kante, Silva and COVID as well. Now, Tuchel said that training today is taking place at 4pm. And of course, every time training comes, he's always praying and hoping that everyone's not going to test negative. Um, the better news is, is that now, Kante and Thiago Silva are both out of isolation. And they're going to have tests later today and they're going to have their cardiac tests to follow with that as well too. The club really follows the official protocol from the league very, very stringently. However, he did not confirm whether Silva or Kante may start in the game tomorrow. Uh, for me, with our game against Man City, it just makes more sense to keep these guys fully rested and ready and prepared for this weekend because it's an afternoon kickoff as well too. I feel like the squad is definitely good enough and deep enough to get us through to the final uh, tomorrow night. Now, one of the few questions was actually focused on the game tomorrow. And of course, when it came to Spurs, Tuchel was asked about our chances and of course, how to stop complacency creeping in as well. Tuchel said that you never want to be cocky from a winning position. The whole foot is not yet in the final. We play a tough match away from home versus a good team. It's best not to expect too much, but to only perform. You want to control the game, of course. We had a very good game in the first leg, but that's now in the past. And of course, tomorrow, we have to focus. So we move on to the final two questions and we start with Billy Gilmore. Unfortunately, he's going to be out for the next three to four weeks. 
he's picked up an ankle injury and this now means that he has returned back to the club for assessment. Now, Tuchel was asked whether we could see Gilmore remaining in January and of course us recording him too and I found Tuchel's answer kind of interesting because it wasn't that concrete or that solid you know he basically said that of course Gilmore has to be assessed first but then he did say that there's been no conversations about whether he stays or goes yet so could that even be like a possibility as well too that we could even look into keeping Gilmore I'm not too sure personally I don't see the benefits at this point in time however you know it is quite interesting that nothing's been ruled out just yet and to end with things we discussed Chris Pulisic. This question was posed by Nizar Ginsella from Gore.com. And of course, you know, Tuchel gave his thoughts on Pulisic and his versatility. With Tuchel saying that, that versatility has been helpful. We have been relying upon him. Physically, he has been very good too. He did admit though that maybe, you know, maybe he's going to have better consistency in one clear position. However, due to the amount of competition we actually have in those attacking positions, it's better to get minutes compared to no minutes. For me, it's kind of interesting though, and it brings up that eternal debate because do quality of minutes matter more or do minutes in general? Is that, is that the most important thing? You guys in the comment section, give your thoughts behind that. And right now, we move on to the predictor lineup. For this segment, I'm gonna go for two possible predictor lineups. Um, for me, I definitely think due to the fact that, you know, Kante and Silva have just returned, let's not rush them in back now. Let them wait for Man City. That seems to be the smartest thing to do, in my opinion. You know, with hudson Doi and having like a potential aggravation on his Achilles, and I think it's a similar thing to loftus Cleek as well too. Could these guys start or could they even come off the bench as subs to use? Um, for me though, with that asymmetrical 4 4 to be used against Spurs, I can see us having another tactical advantage in the second leg. So I guess it's no surprise that for my first predicted lineup, I have gone for a 4-4-2 asymmetrical system. Up front, I've gone for Lukaku and Timo Werner. In attack, Ziyech down that right hand side. Mason Mount as well too. In midfield, I've gone for the rotation options of Saul and Loftus-Cheek. And in defense, I've gone for Alonso, Saar, Rudiger, and Pulisic as well too, with Kepa and goal. Now, of course, originally I had cover in this game, but I'm, I'm also thinking, you guys, yeah, with City coming up, I don't want to take any unnecessary risks. I don't feel worried about loftus Cleek playing. I think his cameos recently, they have been good. I feel he's been getting on, on, on fair criticism, which makes no sense to me personally. Saul is giving me a lot more confidence now. So I definitely feel comfortable with this guy starting in the second leg tomorrow. And I do think that we have options on the bench in case we have to change the game. I think we have to just start smart now and let's not be in any positions where we get any potential injuries coming up, especially with this 2-0 advantage we have against a very indifferent Spurs team currently. Up front, Lukaku and Werner. I guess ideally it could be kind of handy to have two of our most expensive players being able to have that relationship and understanding playing off of each other. I think Lukaku dropping deeper, allowing Werner in behind could be a useful option to have. And of course, with how Ziek just completely destroyed Spurs and how well Mount played as well too, these guys have to play because they're very good at pressing from the front too. In defense, I've gone for Rudy and Saar, Alonso and Pulisic. I think Pulisic, of course, has been playing more as a right back and right wing back. I feel like we could maybe shift how we played against Spurs to the opposite flank where, you know, Pulis is the one tasked with dropping deeper. Alonso moving to become part of that back three system as well too. I could see that working against Spurs and it'd be interesting to see. So you guys, that is my first predicted lineup. For my second one, I've gone for a more uh, standard lineup and maybe one we have more of a bigger chance of seeing against Spurs tomorrow. So I've gone back to 3-4-3 up front, Lukaku alongside him, Ziyech and Mason Mount. In the field, I've gone for Saul and Cover as well. Wing backs, I've gone for Marcus Alonso and Christian Pulisic. And in defense, I've gone for Saar, Rudiger Christensen and Kepa Vengol. Now, like I said for my first lineup, I can understand also seeing Cover and Saul starting in midfield again, with guys who are just returning back from injury coming on off the bench to of course have an impact and just slowly be integrated back into the team. Um, I think Kova was very good. He's been very good this season in general. I think now that Tuchel's kind of just like, you know, simplified this game to like the the the, the bare roots. It's definitely made cover a lot more productive and a lot more effective throughout the season. Uh, so playing that Kante esque role, very helpful as well too. Up front, Mount and Ziyech maybe sat this point in time. Some of the most informed guys in the team currently in Lukaku to start again because if he can get some goals against Spurs tomorrow, I'm gonna feel more confident 
They've got our chances against Man City later this weekend. So our defense, uh, Chris on the right hand side, so he can step up into midfield. Sada on the left, and Rudiger to play centrally because I think in the middle you need to have your defender who's really the best at playmaking playing in that deep middle position. Uh, that's my lineup, you guys. Alonso, of course, on the left. I'd imagine Hudson Odoi to replace him as the gaming goes on. And that's basically it, you guys. In the comments below, state your lineups, state your formations as well, too. I want to read them. And to end with things, we move on to the match prediction, and I'm going for another 2 0 win. I don't really feel that Spurs are that effective yet at breaking teams down and scoring a lot of goals, too. I think that because we're playing away from home, there's more pressure on them now to attack, which means that there is going to be more spaces, hopefully, in behind for us to take advantage of, especially those spaces in behind their wing backs. Because in the last game, we did so well in dragging their wide centre backs and really just disrupting their entire defensive line. So I definitely think that tomorrow, repeat of the same system, same tactics, the players are in form. They're very good at adapting to the roles in the game, too. Bro, like, we're playing like back three in game, um, four, four up front. There's guys inside the books as well, too. There's definitely a game for us to take advantage and get into our first final of the season. So, you guys, on that note, I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.